you're doing well this one will air October the 3rd whoa I'm recording this on the day that the hurricane has touched land there in Florida we're certainly praying for our friends there dr. Lewis the Kelly's pastor Tim and Peggy just thinking of all the people that we know there and I hope and I, I'm sure that God's kept them in the midst of this and that they have uh, done well and I hope you're having a, uh, just a great day. Truth of the matter is, when I do these things, I try and relate to just practical little uh, instances in my own uh, life and family. And one of the things that has kind of touched my heart recently is I get to take the two smallest grandkids out every now and then. You probably have heard this many times. Uh, it's very repetitive. That's what's great about smaller children. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars taking them to new places all the time. They, you could probably do the same thing over and over and over again, and they would be just as happy to do it. Uh, and we go out, and every few times a week, we have this little circle that we go around. We drive to, uh, see the monster trucks that are not far from their house. There's a couple of them. And then we uh, also spend time looking at the big tractor trailers that are parked in a lot not far from their house and boy are they excited uh, the other day we had a one of the drivers was pulling out I actually got him to blow his horn for uh, aid or for uh, Lincoln and man I think it terrified him truthfully <laughs> he expected something that loud <laughs> so it's been good but in the midst of that one of our my youngest Tyler uh, at one point just out of nowhere, just said, that's cool. And I thought, you know, where, now where did he, where does a one and a half year old get this? It had to be one of his brothers, maybe his mom or dad. And I thought, well, you know, you can't just leave it there. You got to add to that, right? I said, that's way cool. And then he started saying, way cool, way cool. Um, you know, young children, don't really understand why they're saying what they're saying or necessarily what they're even saying that's what being a child is all about even the Apostle Paul spoke regarding his relationship to Christ and the Spirit and the Word and the love of God he said when I was a child I spake I spoke like a child I, I didn't really understand all the things that I was saying I think we're all like that in many ways, aren't we? That we just don't necessarily get it all, that we can't really comprehend it all or understand it all. But I just want you to take a moment. One of the beauties of maturing is, is that we learn to speak in a way that is not only mature, but it speaks to the character, our character. And as believers, the character of our Lord. This is why we're told in Ephesians chapter 4, and I believe it's verse 26, that we're not to let any corrupt communication come out of our mouth, but only that which is useful for edifying. In other words, we should be thinking of how we can leave a person in a better place after we've met them than we were, they were before we met them. Our goal is to, is to lead people closer to God, built up, edified. This is why in Colossians chapter 4, I'll, I'll read the verse for you. It says, uh, conduct yourselves in verse 5 with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. We have just so many opportunities and we want to make the most of those opportunities. I think in Ephesians 5, it says, redeem the time, purchase the time, make, see time as valuable and something that you can take advantage of and use. Uh, and then it goes on, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned as it were, with salt, so that you may know how you should respond to each person. 
I don't know, sometimes we lose sight of the fact that, you know, you and I are, no matter how compelling our argument is and how, how winsome our personality is, we're probably not going to convince anybody of something that is spiritually discerned. But if we speak in a way that is motivated by the grace of God, which, by the way, is the power of God. It's God's grace that provides power to us. Paul said that in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and verse 7 and on through 10, where he said that, you know, Jesus said, my grace is adequate. It's more than adequate. Uh, and it's the means by which I'll provide for you in your weaknesses. And Paul said, then I will... I'll just glory in my weaknesses because in those the power of God is manifest. So think about that. God's grace provides the impetus, the power. If I am rightly connected to the Holy Spirit and I'm just living my life in a way so as to speak, not just re repetitiously like a little child, but I'm, I'm speaking in right relationship to my God, motivated by his love. You know, there's power in that. I believe that people go through circumstances so that we can speak with the grace of God, which is powerful. I had somebody call this morning and they were on the, going into a very serious meeting and they were wondering what was going to be the result of that and, and soon I just shared with them that God God's gracious plan he knows the way that you take he has a plan for you and he's going to order your steps he's going to be with you so be you know courageous don't don't be afraid in Joshua 1 8 because he's with you and you know what that was just gracious conversation and it reveals a degree of authority that people don't necessarily have just because we speak the grace of God seasoned with salt we're those people that have the privilege of speaking words because we're not just repeating somebody else's formula, but we actually know the person. We understand his grace, and his grace reveals his power, not only to us, but to those around us in all of our circumstances. So let your words be seasoned with the grace of God today. And if so, hey, You'll be a blessing. Till next time, God bless you.